हेलो फ्रेंड्स द टॉपिक फॉर टुडे इज ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड सिस्टम डेवलपमेंट ओवरव्यू सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट इज अ डायनामिक एंड ऑलवेज अंडरगोइंग मेजर चेंज द मेथड्स विल यूज इन द फ्यूचर नो डाउट विल डिफर सिग्निफिकेंटली फ्रॉम दोज इन द करंट प्रैक्टिस ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड सिस्टम डेवलपमेंट मेथड डिफर्स फ्रॉम ट्रेडिशनल डेवलपमेंट टेक्निक इन दैट the traditional techniques view software as a collection of programs or functions and isolated data whereas the object oriented system development centers on the object which combines data and functionality in today's video we are going to take overview of the object oriented system development let us start Welcome to our channel Engineering and Technology for you. If you are not subscribed to our channel, kindly subscribe and press the bell icon. The topic for today is Object Oriented System Development Overview. Let us start with the introduction. See, the software development is a dynamic and always undergoing major change. There are a lot of uh, changes in the software development earlier and present the methods which we use in the future no doubt will differ significantly from those which we are currently in practice the system development refers to all activities that go into producing a information system solution and software development activities consist of system analysis modeling design implementation testing and maintenance these are the different phases in the software life cycle a software development me methodology is a series of processes that fo if followed can lead to a development of an application so when we want a full fledged application we have to follow series of processes and that will lead to an application the software process describe how to work is to be carried out and to achieve the original goal based on the system requirements object oriented system development methods differ from traditional development techniques the traditional techniques view software as a collection of programs or functions and uh, isolated data so the programs and the data they are separate whereas a software system is a set of mechanism for performing certain action on certain data so here we have uh, two complementary views in traditional system we can focus primarily on the functions or primarily on the data the traditional system development and the object oriented methods they differ here because in object oriented methodologies the focus is different the traditional approach focuses on functions of the system what it is doing means the particularly the functions or algorithms they are main focus whereas in object oriented system development it centers on objects which combines data and functionality so let us see the principles of object orientation so before you study anything you must understand the object orientation if for all things object oriented the conceptual framework is the object model the main part of that model is the object and the main four elements of this model they are abstraction encapsulation modularity and hierarchy first we'll have to understand these elements then only we'll be able to discuss the object oriented first is abstraction a model that 
includes most important aspect of a given system while ignoring less important detail that is called as the abstract so abstraction allows us to manage complexity by concentrating on the essential characteristics that make an entity or object different from others so because of abstraction only we are able to separate one object from the other say for example here we have examples of order processing abstraction so in the order processing we have the customer so this customer is a separate entity then we have salesman who is involved in the selling of the product and we have the product we are having different objects and the object is separate from each other that's why uh, we are able to manage the complexity because whatever are the characteristics of particular object for example that the customer he is interested in buying the product then salesman he is interested in selling the product and the product Uh, it's a entity which will be sold to the customer then encapsulation encapsulation hides the details of the implementation of an object so here you can see in figure this is an object and if we close this door we are not able to see the implementation details of the object so that is encapsulation and it is achieved through information hiding not just data hiding which is the process of hiding all the secrets of the object that do not contribute to its essential characteristics typically the structure of an object is hidden as well as the implementation of its methods so both are hidden only what we know is the behavior of the object then next concept is the modularity so modularity deals with the process of breaking up complex system into small self contained pieces that can be managed easily so for example here we have order processing system. now this is a single system but we can break it down into three modules order entry order fulfillment and then billing so in this way uh, breaking up a complex system into small self contained pieces is nothing but modular and this is achieved with the help of objects and classes then next concept is the hierarchy the hierarchy is nothing but the ordering of abstractions into tree like structure we call it as the hierarchy for example here Uh, commonly a man has different assets so if these assets we can break them down into bank account security and real estate and again bank account can be uh, we can make it saving as well as current so these are the two different types of accounts which the man will have and then security terms of security we can have the stock or different bonds which are taken for the security purpose as we go down we increase the abstraction so this is achieved with the help of inheritance in object oriented program then let us go to the object oriented system development methodology object oriented system development is a way to develop software by building self contained modules or objects that can be easily replaced modified and reused so it encourages a view of the world as a system of cooperative and collaborating objects which will uh, interact with each other for the functionality so in object oriented environment software is a collection of discrete objects 
that encapsulate their data as well as the functionality to model real world objects. And object orientation yields important benefit to the practice of software construction. Each object has attributes. So there is the characteristics of object attributes. There is nothing but the data associated with the object and methods. They are nothing but the functions which are associated with the object. So each object will have attributes and methods that will uh, define their behavior. Then objects are grouped into classes. In object oriented terms, we discover and describe the classes involved in the problem domain. So whatever different things we are having in the problem domain. So as per that we define the classes. Objects are nothing but the instances of the classes. So that's why objects are grouped into classes and classes are involved in the problem domain to describe the problem. Then in object oriented system everything is an object and each object is responsible for its. To take example, every window application needs window objects that can open themselves on screen and either display something or accept input. And window object is responsible for things like opening, sizing and closing its. Then object oriented environment emphasizes its cooperative philosophy by allocating tasks among the objects of the application. In other words, say, rather than writing a lot of code to do all the things that have to be done, you tend to create a lot of helpers. So here helper means nothing but the objects that can take an active role and that will form a community whose interaction becomes the application. So here the objects will do the message passing. That is they will interact with each other and that will become the application. For example, instead of saying system compute the payroll of this employee, you can tell the employee object compute your payroll. So this has a powerful effect on the way we approach the software because here the spirit will be different and each object will be uh, interacting with other objects and they will make the application. Then why an object orientation? The object orientation method enables us to create sets of objects that work together synergically to produce software that better model their problem domains than similar systems produced by a traditional technique. So that is why we have to go for the object orientation. So object oriented development allows us to create modules of functionality. Once objects are defined, it can be taken for granted that they will perform their desired function and you can fill them off in your mind like black box. Now here are some reasons why object orientation works. The first is higher level of abstraction. See the object oriented approach supports abstraction at the object level. Now since object encapsulate both data and functions, they work at a higher level of abstraction. Then second is seamless transition among different phases of software development. See the object oriented approach essentially uses the same language to talk about analysis, design, programming and database design. So this seamless approach reduces the level of complexity and redundancy and makes for clear more robust software development because different phases of the software development they are 
communicating and there is a uh, seamless transition between them because of that it's possible to build a better software then the next is encouragement of good programming technique in a properly designed system the classes will be grouped into sub systems but remain independent therefore changing one class has no impact on other class and so the impact is minimized so this will lead to good programming technique and then last is promotion of reusability so here objects are reusable because they are modeled directly out of the real world problem domain and so the object oriented programming paradigm it supports the promotion of reuse so once you make the objects you can reuse it in many of the application that is how the different windows applications if you look at them you will find uh, the same objects are being used say if you look at a particular application say microsoft office so the same dialog box you will get in different applications a word excel or powerpoint you will have the same open dialog box or save dialog box. so those are nothing but the objects then overview of the unified approach so here unified approach is a better understanding of object oriented concepts and system development so it is based on the methodologies by buch rombok and jacobs and tries to combine the best practices processes and guidelines along with the object management groups unified modeling language so the unified modeling language uml is a set of notations and convention used to describe and model an application then the heart of unified approach is the jacobson's use case so use case represents a typical interaction between a user and a computer system to capture the user goals and needs so generally this will be used for requirement gathering say it is a simplest usage you capture a use case by talking to a typical user and discussing the various ways they might want to use the system the use cases are entered into all other activities of the unified approach so the main advantage of object oriented system is that the class tree is dynamic and can grow we have different classes and will form a class tree and as per our need we can add the class to the tree that's why the tree is dynamic and can grow after your first few projects you will accumulate a repository or class library of your own and one that performs the operations your application most often require let us continue with the overview of the unified approach so the unified approach uses a layer architecture to develop application so here the layer architecture is an approach to software development that allows us to create objects that represent tangible elements of the business independent of how they are represented to the user through an interface or physically stored in database if already we have taken one example of the uh, order processing so there we had different objects like order entry then order fulfillment and billing so here these are three different objects and they are tangible elements of the business and we uh, here we need not represent it to the user will be giving only the interface the layered approach consists of a view or user interface business and access layer so this approach reduces 
the interdependence of user interface, database access, and business control. Therefore, it allows for more robust and flexible systems. They all are different the user interface, database access, and business control. So uh, they are different and they are not dependent on each other. So it will reduce the interdependence. And that's why it allows for more robust and flexible. Then we have the summary of object oriented. In object oriented environment, Software is a collection of discrete objects that encapsulate their data and the functionality to model real world objects. It is what we have discussed. So, once the objects are defined, you can take it for granted that they will perform their desired function and so fill them up in your mind like black box. Then you, your attention as a programmer shifts to what they do rather than how they do it. So the object oriented life cycle encourages a view of the world as a system of cooperative and collaborating agents. So that nothing but the objects. Then the next thing is object orientation produces system that are easier to evolve, more flexible, more robust and more reusable than a top down structure approach. Here in object orientation we have the bottom up approach and we can always add the objects at the bottom and object orientation allows working at a higher level of abstraction then provides a seamless transition among different phases of the software development because because of the objects they have the same language then encourages good development practices and lastly promotes reusability then summary of the unified approach the unified approach is a methodology for software development proposed and used and is based on the Pooch, Rambach and Jacobson method the UA consists of the following concepts use case driven development then utilizing the unified modeling language uml for modeling then object oriented analysis utilizing use cases and object modeling and object oriented design repository of usable classes and maximum reuse so it promotes the concept of reusability then the layered approach incremental development and prototype and last point is the continuous because each module is independent and we can test it separately so with this we come to the end of this video if you have any questions you can contact me on facebook twitter email or instagram then if you like the video press the like button share with your friends and subscribe to our channel engineering and technology for you and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notifications for our future videos and thanks for watching have a nice day